<laughs> Welcome back. If you want to know the backstory behind this, you got to check out the video linked in the description below. So there we were on a train to Luzerne, chocolate pocket and all. And uh, I must say that we are still in day one here. The one thing that you'll notice throughout this video is our wardrobe does change and that's because we did visit Luzerne on two different days. So I compiled all those clips together for consistency. Where are we going, babe? We're going to look at old, old town. After we exited the train station, we walked across the Zeebrugge Bridge with wonderful views of Lake Luzerne to the east. As you cross the bridge, you can really start to see some of that medieval architecture that Luzerne is known for. That blue and white flag hanging by the Swiss national flag represents the canton of Luzerne, which is one of the 26 member states of the Swiss Confederation. If you listen closely in the background, you can hear the horns of the paddle boats that travel Lake Luzerne. Luzerne basically lies at the foothills of the Alps and has a very diverse nature. Check out the palm trees behind me. You can even see banana trees growing on the lake shore. Now we weren't just aimlessly wandering around the city. We had a destination in mind, so we headed north up the hills. Four-wheel drive. We were looking for the Musigmore, the medieval fortification of Luzerne. And before you know it, there before our very eyes, we could see one of the towers. Uh -huh. Hannah, you what? The wall. The wall? Uh, yeah. This wall goes on for like 800 meters. The Musugmar contains nine towers, three of which are accessible. They're all connected by a walkway and you can get some great scenic and panoramic views from those walkways and towers. Ah, that's cool. Oh, look. Olive oil. Yeah, there you go. Most of these towers were aptly named for the function they served. For example, the Hugh Tower served as a hay storage while the Pulver Tower served as gunpowder storage. Baby, watch out. There's a dude. I know. Yeah, so probably Are you kidding me? I'm not <laughs> <laughs> It's like going in the watchtower. This incline right here is no joke, is it? I think she off. It's not here. Yeah. It's not it. <sighs> yeah, this is the protected city. That's what I'm saying. They hung somebody up here. Wow. The shingles. I am soaked in sweat. Did I mention we traveled to Europe during a heat wave? You can see the walkway that connects the towers down below. Definitely need a beer after this. Wow, that's a crazy view right there. Yeah. Here we go, we're going up. So we were already at the top of that. There's nine of them connected. It's the Great Wall. Definitely Switzerland's version of the Great Wall, but you can see why it was built here, prime territory to defend Luzerne. 172 meters. Beautiful breeze. Our next goal was to find a restroom because we all had to go. And just north of the wall, we found a public restroom. Just look for the WC sign for water closet. We just found the, uh, the old uh, WC water closet. Had to go. Their moose egg. What is this thing? All right. Somebody tell me what it is. What? Cock a doodle doo to you too. Kitty, 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 kitty. Yeah, that's in the station. That looks like a bobcat. Oh. Ow. Yeah, quite a view on the back side here. Do we have to get all the day or just 
I was looking at it, but you weren't looking at me. No, long. Come on. One, two, three. That's it. Ta da! Alright. One, two, three. That's it. Ta da! We did it! Alright! We continued our journey west southwest until we reached the Ruiz River. And as we peek out here and look to the right, you can see the very final tower in the Musig Wall. Next stop, that bridge you see there in the background. You're the queen of buses. Oh, that's a power plant. It's a power plant. Hmm? One thing that's very apparent, the Swiss know how to harness the power of water. They have plenty of water and runoff that comes from the Alps, and they certainly know how to use it to their advantage. This is actually not the chapel bridge. This is a Spurbrücke bridge, which does contain a chapel, but is not the official chapel bridge. This is one of two covered foot bridges. The actual chapel bridge is further upstream, and we'll pass by that later in the video. This little wooden structure on the bridge served to guard one from the elements back in the day. It also served as a chapel. This little wooden structure carries the name Maria on the Rus, and you can see some depictions of saints in the stained glass there. Some wonderful artwork as well. The Rus River allowed Luzerne to transform itself from a fishing village to an important trade route stop connecting points north and south. Have a cheers pub. Look at those tourists. Can you imagine if your CVS or Walgreens looked like this? I guess it's four o'clock. Now there was no doubt that we were getting thirsty at this point and we eyed up this restaurant pretty hard, but then this church across the street caught my eye with these beautiful green onion top towers. All right, all right, enough resisting. Time to sit down for a nice cold beer. Cinematic on my end. I should have flown, right? Next stop, Luzerne Pier. On our way, we pass by the real chapel bridge. It's very distinctive because it runs diagonally across the Roos River. Oh, huge. We head just across the street to catch our boat for a tour of Lake Luzerne. As we boarded our boat, we didn't really have a particular destination in mind. All we knew was we were going to get off at the first place that seemed interesting, and that was good enough for us. And so with that in mind, we set sail on Lake Luzerne. As I did mention previously in our first Switzerland trip video, we did purchase the Swiss Travel Pass, and that included access to the various boats and destinations on Lake Luzerne. Overlooking Lake Luzerne is Mount Pilatus. Mount Pilatus is home to Switzerland's longest summer toboggan run, which we'll visit in another video. So stay tuned. We arrived at our destination. That mountain behind the boat there is Bergenstock. It's also a small resort. Welcome to Hertenstein. And you may be asking why we picked this destination. Well, we were on the boat, we looked over and we saw a quaint little cafe and we were thinking it's time for another beer. So we should probably stop here. Look at the tree. You see it everywhere. Did you see what it was? B-I-O. B-O and then whatever drink it is. Mmm. Oh. 
Mojito. Mm -hmm. The tastes a little bit mojito. After downing a traditional Swiss beer, Ein Siedler, we headed back to the boat. This time we've got a treat for you. We're taking the paddle boat. Oh, it's, it's one of the uh, battle wheels. boat trips I've ever been on. Just like that, we were back in Lizard. Where's this lion at? Next stop, the Lion Monument. The Glacier Garden. That water's coming out of a fish. Trust it. We're just in the water. The Lion of Lucerne Monument commemorates those Swiss guards that lost their lives during the French Revolution in 1792. If you look closely, you can see that this lion is dying. He's been impaled by a spear, his paw resting on the shield of the French monarchy. You can see the fleur de lis insignia, and beside him, resting on the wall, is another shield with the coat of arms of Switzerland. See the reflection. Oh, look at the lion. Lion. getting late and it was about time for us to wrap our day up but we had one more stop in store the mall of switzerland it's like the mall of america the mall of switzerland is located in ebicon which is a quick train stop on our way from lucerne back to our home base in zurich the mall has over 80 stores and 12 restaurants and i just had to check out the mountain bikes we were pooped time to head home hope you enjoyed the content just remember everybody needs a plan b Ciao, ciao for now.